Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie with Pocket Preschool and tonight we are going to talk all about a nocturnal animal theme and activities you can do in your classroom, um, dramatic play, blocks, STEM, art, sensory, literacy, math, all the things um, that goes with a nocturnal animals theme. So what I want to tell you is, is at the top of this post, you will find links. So what I want you to do is tell me in the comments, tell me when or if you do a nocturnal animals theme. So do you do a nocturnal animals theme or you do, do you do a fall theme or Halloween or do you do just like a week of bats, a week of spiders type thing? So I want to, I just want to know all the things about you guys. So what we're going to do is I'm going to turn the camera around, show you all the things, but just know that I never get to all of these activities ever. Um, I kind of pick and choose based on what my kiddos need um, for this year and I do that. So, and I'm a half day classroom, so I teach Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings. And before that, I taught full day, which we were open seven to six, seven a.m. to six p.m. And I have 18 kids right now. I have eight kids in my half day room, but it's just me by myself. When I had 18 kids, I had, there was four teachers total, but obviously we had shifts. So yeah. All right, so I'm gonna flip it around and show you all the funness because I have some really, really awesome stuff for you guys. So, nocturnal animals, there's like spiders and bats, right? I kind of, spiders and bats, I think are kind of the easiest ones to do. So what I did was, I took a big piece of white butcher paper, then I kind of turn it sideways so you can see. And then with tape, I just made a giant spider web. If you don't have black masking tape, which I have colored masking tape from Amazon, um, you can just buy it, um, you can just um, draw it too, or paint it and then let it dry and it'll have it for the next day. Um, I know some people put this on the ground, but I'm actually planning on saving this so you can use it again. You can just like fold it up or roll it up and use it the next year. Um, because you know, once you make it once, we don't wanna make it again. <laughs> so what I did is I just put uppercase letters on here, but you could definitely do lowercase, you could do student names. You could also do sight words or numbers. And then there's a couple different ways you could play this game. So I have these little letter tiles. So I could have, um, what I'm gonna do is have my pre, well, not really my pre-K, because some of my, all my pre-K kids don't know all their uppercase yet. So my kiddos that need to work on uppercase, I will just have them match the letters like that. And then I'll have my kiddos who are ready do the lowercase letters. These are just like letter tiles. But if you don't have letter tiles, um, you could use any like letter manipulative you have or magnet letters. Um, you could also too, if you wanted to make it gross motor, you could have them throw a bean bag and just say the letter. You could also like hang this on the wall and they could throw it and say the letter and then, um, or say the sound. So yeah, so tons of different things you can do um, with like a little web um, web giant web letter game. And then what I would do too is I'd probably just like roll this up and then I would, they could like put it on the carpet during center time. Um, another fun thing we did today was I'll kind of, so I bought this black, like it's like a roll of that wrapping paper. It's in like the cheap section at Michael's. Um, and what I did was we made a spooky night letters. So I took those eyeball stickers from Discount School Supply and I just put them all over. And then I put out these just, and you guys know I love letter beads. These are the uppercase, obviously they have lowercase too. You can get them from um, Amazon or Michaels. Um, but I just took the like purple, black, and white ones and I just put them on the paper and all they had to do is pick up the letter and they had to write it. And this was our like end of day, like departure activity on the table. So in the morning, what I'm gonna do is everybody will have their own piece of black paper and then um, I'll probably just put this on, I'll like put this paper back up on the table, but I'll have it flipped over so it's just black and I'll have the letters out and they just pick a letter off the table and then they write it down. So you can kind of see, that I just had my pre-K kiddos do this today. I had my, um, my three-year-olds do something different. And then we just use white crayons. I actually have like, I keep my white crayons separate just because we use them on black paper so often. 
Um, so yeah, so just a super fun, easy um, activity you could do. Let me show you another one of my spider webs. So I got this from Lakeshore and all I did, I just love that it's a vertical surface because when kiddos are using a vertical surface, they are working on their upper arm and their shoulders as well as um, they're, you know, just matching the letter. So they're kind of getting some motor activity in too. So what they do is they just pick the letter and again, I before we develop our little muscles. So it kind of starts with our core. So once they have a strong core, then they can work on those leg and those upper arm and shoulder muscles. And then those little muscles in our hand develop. So it kind of works from the, the middle, so your core, and it goes out. So again, working on those vertical surfaces, they're moving, you can see me, they're moving their arms up and down and they're having to use those shoulders. Um, and they're using their core to stabilize themselves as they write, um, like sitting up. So yeah. So just a fun little tidbit. Nocturnal animals um, riding table. And you can tell y'all, like my kiddos are loving it this year. I really need to use a magic eraser. Um, but they are like loving the writing center. Just the theme paper from my nocturnal animal, nocturnal animal center pack. And then I put stickers in here, but I cut them up small. You can tell they really like the stickers this year. And I have, um, if you don't have stickers, they can get them for a dollar at Michael's. You can also ask parents to donate them. Um, so yeah, and then I also have these letter cards um, with these little stars. So while they're at the writing table, they can make, oh, make the letters with the stars. So, and then these, I, you can also use dry erase markers on here, but I had um, dry erase markers at this table, <laughs> um, I think two themes ago. And one of my kiddos drew all over the table. So I'm not going to have expo markers at the, here yet. <laughs> um, but they can still make letters with manipulatives. And then the nocturnal animal books. Which, you guys, I think the nocturnal animal books are kind of few and far between. At least from what I can find. I mean, obviously there's like the great Eric Carle ones. Quiet Cricket, Lonely Firefly, Busy Spider. I also love... Walter's Wonderful Web. It's a scholastic book and it's about shapes. Um, twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. And then obviously you can do um, some great nonfiction. I get a lot of my nonfiction from Scholastic. Um, you can also do the mouse books, Mouse Count, Mouse Paint, because since mice are nocturnal animals, you can add in some nursery rhymes and do Itsy Bitsy Spider. And then 10 Hooting Owls. And there's also the 10 Bats from Scholastic, which is also great um, to use for counting. But if you guys know any nocturnal animal books that are not on my bookshelf, put them in the comments because I had a hard time finding some quality children's books. All right, so manipulatives you can use are. So I'm just going to show you options. And again, I've been teaching for like 15 years, so I just have a giant collection. Um, you know, 15 years of dollar store trips, but you can use like black gems. If you have mini erasers like spiders, this was last year's, these are this year's. Um, this is table scatter actually from like Halloween table scatter. Um, it's just like it has spiders and bats in it. Um, again, more table scatter. Um, and Hobby Lobby usually has table scatter as well. I don't have a Hobby Lobby by me yet. Um, I think they're building one, which I'm so excited about. Um, but yeah, table scatter is great. Um, you can use stars. These are from my kindergarten crate, these big ones. And then these are just little ones from Target. You can use star beads. You could also just use yellow or silver pony beads. Eyeballs are really fun to use as counters. If these are too small for your kiddos, get those eyeballs that are bigger. Um, those are really fun too. Spider rings are fun. Again, you can get the foam shapes and we, I, you guys know I love these things. So what I, one thing I like to do with them is put letters on them and then you can put them on the table and they can just match the letter manipulatives or you can make this into a gross motor game and you can spread them out over the floor and kind of play like a freeze with it. So you put all the letter bats on the floor and then the music stops and they have to find that letter and touch it or, you know, touch it with their toe or touch a friend that's touching that letter. So yeah, so I tried to write on these with like a 
paint pen that didn't work out so well. I need, think I need to use a silver sharpie. But these you can usually they're just all foamies, and you can use um you could do like letters on one side. Oh, I guess that one went through. <laughs> um, you, but you can put letters on both sides so you can get the whole alphabet in. Um, and you can do it with the spiders too. You could also get these like spider plates. You can tell I haven't even opened them yet. They're probably from the dollar store or Target or somewhere on clearance from last year. Um, you can write numbers on them and they can either roll a dice and find that number and then count out that many like little spiders, like one, two, or they could, you could just write numbers on the plates and they could put that many spiders on there. Another fun thing to do with these are put different types of lines on there. So um, they could just take a piece of paper and they could like pick this spider and you could even use dry erase boards or a writing tray and then they could make zigzags. They could make like those squiggles like an S. Um, they could do long lines. So again, you could just do those two um, types of lines if your kiddos aren't ready for letters. Um, this is a classic. Um, right? You just take a basket and then some yarn and just kind of weave it in and out and then they use the tweezers to get out the spiders. And then you guys know me, I throw, again, these letter beads, like I use them, like gosh, probably like three, four times a week. Um, put some letter beads in there and then they can grab, I, I can't do, <laughs> I am like butter fingers today, you guys. They can grab the letter, as well as just grabbing the spiders. Um, and you can put the letters and their name in there. And I will say, um, make sure you, if you have little guys, um, like this one's obviously harder than that one. Um, yeah, so make sure you, if you, if they're, if, they're, if they're struggling, just cut some of the string off and then do it easy. And I just put it, like I knot one side and then I like lace it and then I just knot the other. Super simple. Um, in our journals this week, and I will do a whole Facebook Live on our fine motor journals. So our fine motors journals are, we end the day every week, and, or every, every day with our journals, and instead of doing like a, like a writing journal, first semester we do more of like a fine motor journal. Like sometimes we've done... We do like different kinds of drawings and like tape and we cut. So today, or sorry, this is Monday. So on Monday, we, we, we learned how to draw circles from when we did our Apple unit. Um, so I, ha I first I model it. So I go around, 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 stop. And then we call and I model how to color it in. And then I make the lines and then they make it. And then I say markers down. And then I say, you know what? The spider kind of looks like a letter Q. And I don't make any sound correlation at all. It's just how the letter is, or how the letter is similar to what we're making. Um, so a Q is kind of the same because you can make a circle like the spider's body and it just has one little legs poking out. So then I real quick go around everybody's journal, write their Q, and then they make the other side of their journals um, with Q. And somebody's asking about these cut spiders. I want to say it's probably either Michael's or um, it's either Michael's or Target or maybe Dollar Store. Those are the three places I always find my foam cutouts from. And I always get them on clearance the year before. Today we did um, spider webs. These were tricky because I said first you make three circles. So you go around, stop, around, stop, around, stop. And then you make an X through the middle to make a spider web. And I said, oh, that's kind of like the letter X. So this is a pre-K friend too. My letter beads are from Amazon, Melissa, and I will put that link afterwards. Um, so yeah, so we made spider webs and then we make X's. Again, I don't tie any of it to sounds because we're, again, this is our fine motor journal. So we're just working on di making different types of lines and making those different types of letters. Keep, to keep going with the fine motor theme, here's our writing tray this week, or for this theme. So this black sand I actually got from the dollar store. And then I love these little, they're like a dollar. You can get them at like Walmart or Michaels. Um, and they're just like, they're called like seasonal sprinkles packs. And basically they're just fun little sprinkles, but look, they're perfect for my writing tray. 
and I don't tell the kids they're sprinkles so they don't eat them. So these trays are Melissa and Doug, but you can also use like those kid divided plates or those plastic food dividers um, too if you don't have these wooden writing trays. And all they do is they make the letter and then they shake to erase. And these bat letters are in my nocturnal animals theme. And if you are not a fan of sand trays, which is fine, um, you can still incorporate different um, sensory activities for writing. These are just those hair gel baggies here. These are the ones I had from Halloween last year. I just got out the silver, or it's actually just clear hair gel, and this one just has silver glitter in it. Um, and all they do, I don't know if I can do this by my, they just, obviously they would use their finger to do it, but you have to, you can either tape it to the table or um, they just hold it with other hand. I can't do it with one hand, I don't think. <laughs> Trying to hold it and make my letter. So there's like an A. And the, I also put little eyeballs in this one. And this, to make the colored hair gel baggies or the sensory baggies, um, just do a couple drops of like literally maybe a drop of liquid, um, liquid watercolor or you can use food coloring. Either or, and then just tape the top shut. So super fun. You can also write on a mirror. We did this for our camping theme last week. So they can just pick a letter and write the letter on their mirror and then they can erase. Um, these mirrors are those non-breakable mirrors from Discount School Supply. Um, I wanna say they come in a pack of like 12. So yeah, really fun. And then in my Nocturnal Animals theme pack, I have the read bill write, and you can either do a letter, and then they write, they read the letter, write it, and then the, they, this is a spooky one, they can make it with um, eyeballs. You can also do sight words, so they would put the sight word here, and then they would write it, and then they can build it with the bats. So they would put like the bat letters down here instead of the eyeballs to make the word. So again, just a whole bunch of different fun ways that use all their senses or different senses to get them learning their letters because I do not do letter of the week, but these are all of the things I do instead. So like, sorry, not to make you guys dizzy. So like I do the web letters and the, um, the other <laughs> nighttime letter activity I did. I have my writing center with letters. And then we do all of these fun, different ways to write letters. And then we play letter games. So this is what we do instead of letters, letter of the week. Um, so these are just super simple letter cards. And they have to find the letter and then cover them up. And you can use mini erasers. You can use whatever you want. And again, these don't have any like sound correlation. They're just matching um, letters. And they're just all little nocturnal animals that I just dropped everywhere. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna turn, so I hope I don't make you dizzy. Um, another game that we play, oop, I forgot my thing. Um, so this is just a feed me game. So you can play this game a couple of different ways. They can, I have paper clips on them, so that way, they can use a magnet wand or just a magnet and they pick up the letter with the magnet wand and they just say H and they put it in. Or, again, I have upper uppercase and then I also have lowercase because um, I'm gonna do them uppercase and then they would have to match them so they would have to find like, upper. this is just the letters in my name and you can make it into a class book. So what they do is they get this page, super simple. Um, it's kind of like a twist on, um, I know everybody loves like chicka chicka boom boom letters, like makes books with that. So why not make letters or um, class books about their name for other themes too. So they'll just get a strip of these, these um, squares and either they can cut them out or you can cut them out depending on their level for um, scissor skills. And then they write the letters in their name. And again, you can totally differentiate this. They can write the letters in their name. You can put out name cards so they have a guide or a visual to help them, or you can write it in like pencil or like a yellow marker and then they could trace. And then it just says, my name is Caden and I have five letters in my name. One, two, three, four, five. And they, they can count and then you make it into a book. And then you have a class book about letters that is about their names because 
Kids are egocentric and they love themselves and their friends. Here's a fun game for math. It's basically, um, they're just matching the owls and there's baby owls and mommy owls or daddy owls, whatever you wanna call it. And I just sometimes put, if you have a matching game, it can get a little boring. So just put in like a little um, tub with a sensory filler in it. Don't need a lot of filler, just a little bit. Um, these are just from Target. So yeah, super simple. Um, here's a, I know a lot of you guys are asking me for games about counting on, and that will be, um, I will have games about counting on, um, starting with a different letters, um, and the counting to 20 pack. Um, but this is a game, so you could do this game starting at one, or you could have them start at like eight, and then they have to count on, um, like you just wouldn't put a hole on this side. Um, so you just do it that way too. But basically they're making a little possum family, which possums are so gross, but aren't they just so cute here? <laughs> but it's great um, fine motor because they're using the lacing. Um, they're using the, they're lacing them or like linking them with the chain. So fine motor and math. Here is a fun snack we did today. I actually didn't eat mine, you guys, so I could show you. So it's just a graham cracker. And then we took brown icing. And you could totally do this with um, white icing in the winter for like a snowy owl. Basically, it's just a, like a little owl. So it's a, the graham cracker, chocolate icing, candy corn nose, and then I took a big marshmallow and I either you can either cut it in half or um, cut it in half with scissors. Like I have food scissors, so I just cut it in half. And then the wings are pretzels. And if you want them to have more chocolate, you can give them a little pack of M&Ms and they can add feathers. So what we did when we did this was I put um, a picture of an owl on the table and we talked about all their different body parts. So we talked about how they have a body and they have feathers on it. And as we um, put the icing on, we said, oh, they have what kind of whatever they notice is what we put on next. So one can notice eyes and they're like, okay, here's the eyes. And they're like, oh, we need pupils. So you can either buy like the colored icing in a tube or I just like dyed it and then put it in a baggie. So I, and then I just went around and like squeezed it out. And then they put two pupils on. And then they talked, we can talk, they talked about wings and we talked about how it has lots of feathers because of course my class did the one with the m &Ms. So yeah, so super, super fun. All right, okay. So now I'm gonna show you some art goodness. Okay, it's kind of shining the, like a little glare on this one for some reason. So I totally cheat and use store-bought Play-Doh, but you can totally make your own black Play-Doh. I just use black um, black uh, liquid, water, liquid watercolor to make my black Play-Doh. Um, that's usually the only way I can get like an actual black. Otherwise it turns like that weird purpley nasty color. You store about Play-Doh, regular Play-Doh, and then this is that table scatter I got at Michael's last year on clearance. And then I have, so I have spiders and bats. And then I bought these cookie cutters um, at Michael's last year when it was when they were on sale. And I did, I've been at Michael's this year, and they don't have the webs, I don't think, but they do have other um, nocturnal animals you could put in here. And since I have the webs, I put in these um, pipe cleaners. That way they can make designs on the webs. And then of course you have eyeballs because if they want to make like a cave or something, they can um, put little an animals in their little cave. So here are some fun um, art activities you can do. So I went to the Dollar Tree this week and I found these, how fun are these? They're little circle sponge dabbers. So I was like, oh, we can make a trees with those. So my kids are really into cutting long lines right now. Don't know why, but they love it. So it's like, okay, let's do an art activity because they, they're doing it anyways. So we haven't done this yet. That's why this is my model. But what I'll do is I'll give them a long piece of paper and then they'll just cut strips. Cut long strips and then they can glue those on and then they can put the little animal. These are those, again, those discount school supply eyeball stickers. Um, and then they use the little sponge for the trees. And look at this, look at this, you guys. This is great for developing um, that pencil grip and developing that, those fine motor muscles because as they grab the little sponge, they are working on those finger skills. So again, just it's kind of open-ended art. Um, and obviously, if my kiddos just 
glue them all over the page and put the eyeballs wherever and just stamp everywhere. That's totally fine with me too. Um, but my pre-K kiddos will probably look more like this, whereas if I have a three-year-old, it'll probably just be a hot mess, which is fine. I love hot mess art. It's open-ended art. That's what it's for. We actually did this one this week, um, like marble painting. So I just took a box. I'm going to see if I can try and do this for you guys. And then I put a whole bunch of marbles in. And these tweezers, they're plastic and they're from the dollar store. They're in like the, what do you call it, section. Um, they're in like the pretty food section, like the fancy section. Um, but look at how much fun it is when you add a whole bunch of marbles um, to it. And then I love adding the tweezers because then they can use those fine motor muscles to get them out. And these dried pretty quick. Um, so they took them out and then they made little spiders on them. And like I said, my kiddos are loving cutting those long lines. So on this, and we actually did this. So this was a um, out. So as they came in in the morning, they each made one of these. And then for small group, we made, put the spider on it because it dried that quick. So I just gave them a rectangle piece of paper and they just cut strips and they made legs. Um, it was really cute because um, some of them made too many. So they shared them with friends who didn't make enough legs. And then I gave them a circle body, which I can't cut circles, you guys. So I totally cheat and use these like paper punches. I, you can get them at like Hobby Lobby and Michaels. And then spiders have eight eyes, which they thought was hilarious. So then they put eight legs on and they put eight eyeballs on. Again, dot stickers. I love these things. They're so awesome. So yeah, so how, these are so fun. Oh my gosh, I just love how these turned out. So yes. And then a lot of people ask like how, how do you have this set up like during like your school time? So I have my, this part of my shelf always is where my new, because every week I have a different open-ended art activity. And a lot of times I have it on the table, but I always have the shelf open in case they want to make something else. So I just try and put things on trays so they can just easy peasy move it to this spot right here. That way, if they want to use the table for something else in art, they can. And then you can always do, um, Lindsay, I will give you the link, the link for the cruise um, after we are done. Um, you can always just do a traditional night sky um, cookie cutter art. Um, again, I, I always buy my cookie cutters. I actually found this one this year at Michael's. Um, yeah, this star is probably from Michael's too. Um, and it tricked when you're using white paper. I did this with this green paint too. Add a little bit of white to the paint. So I added white to the green and I added white to the yellow because this is actually dry, but that way you can actually see the paint once it's dry and it, it's that way, it makes it a little bit more opaque. So yeah, so just add a little bit of white to your paint so you can make beautiful cookie cutter paintings. And cookie cutters are really, really, really great for um, developing that hand-eye coordination and they're pushing so they're using pressure on their wrist. And I have a weird glare tonight, sorry guys. And again, they're using all those fingers. And then you can also do like typical like paper bag, like crafty type raccoons and skunks. These are actually from my camping dramatic play pack, which I'm gonna show you dramatic play in just a second. But these printables are in my dramatic play pack if you want that, or you can just make your own. It's totally up to you. So I'm gonna try and not make you guys dizzy. Um, so here is my dramatic play. So for nocturnal animals, we are doing camping. As you can see, we have a night sky. And this is my trick um, to hang stuff. So I put a command hook on the ceiling and I poke a hole in the corner and I just use a book ring or a metal ring to hang it. So and these are just plastic tablecloths. Those have extra rings on them for some reason. <laughs> and I actually, um, these are from a different year. The kiddos made stars a different year. And I literally folded up and saved them. But now, 
since we're doing nocturnal animals, we now have a night sky for our campsite. And then we also have a river. And here's our little, our campsite. They made the mural. This is actually our, our third week doing camping because we did a camping theme the first two weeks in October and now we're doing nocturnal animals. So I, I just slowly add things to pretend um, because you can totally do a pretend theme for a month. Um, the tape on the ground is the nature trail and I try and use my um, printable sign so they can kind of like label it. Here's a fire that somebody made. They're just real, real logs and sticks. Um, and then the fire is just literally like tissue paper. Like you don't have to have fancy stuff. Um, my tent that, <laughs> so funny story. So I ordered am this on Amazon. My dogs ate the package. So now we have an extra window <laughs> in our tent because my dogs ate the package. But luckily they didn't eat the front. So it's kind of funny. But yeah, so that's just a little pop-up tent from Amazon. They painted the mural this year. Um, I want to say the clouds are from like two years ago. That guy needs to be helped a little bit. And then they made the birds last week during our camping thing. And these are just like, they cut the circles and they just glued on pom uh, cotton balls but for that. And then we have all of our, our camping things. Look, looks like they didn't put away everything. Look, real life guys. Like they didn't put away all the food. The food's usually in here, but it happens. And then marshmallows and I just use an empty bag. And then I have like that, it's like a felt set from like the Target dollar spot. And then chocolate is just again felt. And then I just have a graham cracker box to have environmental print. And then this is um, felt. Oh, actually, take it back. My s'mores kit, um, they had them in the Target dollar spot, but I actually got my s'mores kit from um, my Kinder Crate one month. And then on this side, we have all kinds of fun stuff. So we have flashlights from the dollar store. That little lantern came with my tent. Sleeping bags, which are just pieces of material. Binoculars. I don't know where the sunglasses are. My guess is they're in the backpack. <laughs> a backpack. And then we have pretend sunscreen. So it's a really um, great way to practice sun safety is when they practice um, putting on sunscreen for dramatic play. And our fishing rods are missing, which they're, my guess is they're in the backpack. And then these are just some fish. And then I have, oh, here, I'll make more sense to do it like this. So what they do when they go fishing is, is they put them in the river and then they can catch them and then they can sort them. So maybe they're going to sort, or maybe they're going to try and catch all the yellow fish or maybe they're gonna try and catch all the little fish. So by putting out different fish that are different sizes, um, in my fishing poles have a magnet on the end and I like made them with the dot rod. I, if I find them, I'll post a photo after we're done. Um, but yeah, that way they're sorting um, as they play. They can sort by color, sort by size, or maybe they won't even sort, but maybe they'll notice. Maybe they'll be like, oh my gosh, I caught the big fish, or oh no, I caught the small fish, or the medium fish. So. Regardless, they're using that math vocabulary and they're noticing the different sizes um, and sorting, hopefully. <laughs> and Oh, and my cave. So this cave is actually, I don't know if you can see it. It's the, there's the table leg. So this is actually just, I didn't even tape it, you guys. Like I just balled up the brown butcher paper. Oh, our, our bear is kind of sad. <laughs> but I just like, covered the pap the table in brown, the pretend table that I always have in here in brown paper. And then I put some over the top. As you can see, it's like not even taped. And now we have a fun cave. And then we have bug jar. And then all these printables are in my camping dramatic play set. So they can go on a hunt and find these different things. Um, and usually I have some of the more of these things on our mural but um, they have not been that interested in going on nature hunts, so I haven't really put those out, or you can put stuffed animals out. They have really been into packing and just acting out all of these things. So they've been packing all the things, and then they go to sleep, and they eat, and they make s'mores. So this is what they've been using a lot of this time. So that is dramatic play. 
Super fun. And again, all of the printables in all the directions are in my dramatic play um, unit on TPT. And I just love dramatic play because you can sneak in so much learning and there's language and social skills into their play. So this is the sensory table. So these are just macaroni noodles that I dyed with liquid watercolor. Put the noodles in a bag. Oh, somebody's asking, so sorry. So the lines on the floor are the trail in the campsite. So it kind of gets some gross motor in. So that way, some of them kind of use it like a balance beam and they walk on the trail or maybe they're just following the line and it just gives them kind of some another thing to do and to act out as they go on the trail. And it really, when they go on this trail, their imaginations like go wild, like, oh my gosh, I see the bear, blah, 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 blah. So lots of vocabulary and language, oral language when they're on that trail. So yeah, back to the sensory table. So these are just macaroni noodles that I dyed, liquid watercolor, um, test tubes, which my kit, I have, um, they're really loving this year, just filling, like scooping, pouring, emptying, like filling containers. You can see they put the little mini erasers in there. Um, these test tubes are from something from the Target Dollar Spot. And these jars are from something from the Target Dollar Spot came in them. Um, and then this is a tray from the Dollar Tree. And then I also have bats in here. And then these little scoops. So I, I drink an energy drink and it's like a powder. So these little scoops, I don't know why I'm getting this glare today. Um, these little scoops are perfect because, again, fine motor as they pinch and they grab. And they can't scoop a ton. So if they scoop some, they're only scooping a little bit. Um, so it won't get all over the floor. And, again, just great fine motor than having a big scoop. And then I have tweezers, which these are from Walmart. And they um, are perfect for these pom-poms. So I have, I want to say I got these pom-poms, like, on clearance at the end of the season, maybe at Michael's. And they're just purple and black. So just sparkly. So that is the sensory table. And you don't have to have a ton of noodles <coughs> or sensory filler in your sensory table. Like it's okay if they can see the bottom a little bit. Like it's not, like I wanna say this is only like two boxes of noodles. So yeah, and I keep my filler every year so that way I don't have to make it again the next year. And drum roll please, I have the nocturnal animal stew. stew. Why is it so bright on me tonight? So this will be aft added to the, the um, stew bundle um, after we're live because I was having issues with my internet, which is why I was a couple minutes late. So this is the nocturnal animal stew. So if you own the theme stew or the giant counting stew bundle, it will be added to this later tonight. Um, I, I, Tried to get it added, but I was having, my internet would not, my Wi-Fi wouldn't work. Again, I live in the country, all the fun is. So what they do is they pick a recipe card. So they'd pick out two spiders, and these are just spider rings. One, two, and they put it in their pot, and they would pick out five bats. One, two, three, four, five. <coughs> and then four webs. One, two, three, four, and then they mix their pot. I usually have, I haven't um, introduced this yet. I'm gonna introduce it on Friday. <coughs> and then they make their stew and then they put all the, all the items back in the counting stew. So, and then I have my number line out. So that way, if they don't recognize the number, they can find the number on the number line and they can count one, two, that's two. And the cards go up to five, and then they go up to nine, and there's also blank ones. And I found that I have a itty bitty three this year, like just turned three. Um, she loves doing this one, and she just gets out one. So she'll just, she'll just get out one web, and then one stick, and one spider. So that's great if you have itty bitty threes, and you're just practicing one-to-one um, -one correspondence. And so these sticks I found at Hobby Lobby in the Christmas section. Um, and look how cool they are. They're just like nice and they're sanded um, and they're real sticks. But yeah, so cool. So that will be added to the Counting Stews bundle 
um, later tonight once I, hopefully my Wi-Fi is working. Hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed. I also have a measuring game out. This is from my um, Nocturnal Animals pack. They just measure all the different animals um, and measure how big they are. Super fun. And then they can either use the star erasers to measure or the cubes. So they can be like, this spider is one, two, three big or three long. My kids are really into measuring things this year with the cubes. And then, of course, you have to have nocturnal animals at the science table. So we have the animals so they can look at them with the magnifying glass and notice the different parts. Because we've been talking a lot about um, different animals, their body parts, and we talked about their adaptations, about how um, night animals, uh, that's, that's kind of a fierce little raccoon <laughs> um, that I put on there. And then how their, their five senses are different than ours and they work better at night and how they're different than ours. So they have been really loving and talking about that. And then I have a sort over here, parts of a bat, and just some really fun um, vocabulary cards to go with the nocturnal animals team. So even though they can't touch and feel real nocturnal animals, they can definitely notice the characteristics of these little animal figures. And these are mostly those tab figures. I get them at Michael's when, and I use my 40% off coupon. This big giant bat is from the dollar store um, because during Halloween, of course. So that's perfect. And it does come with a read aloud too. So this is all my nocturnal animals um, science unit. So yeah, so grab that if you want it. And then let me show you blocks, fall, stem, I can build unit. I can build a hollow spot, cave, a den, a tree and a forest. The web one was already in there. So if you, again, all of these are in my nocturn, or nocturnal animals. These are in my stem, I can build fall pack. And I really just like having these, and I printed these full, the full page ones, because I like all of the great vocabulary. So like hollow spot, a cave, a den, you're talking about habitats, a lot of science happening. And then over here for the props, these are just my tub of fake leaves that I love. Again, just, you know how we use all the tops for all of the fun stuff. Um, just keep all the leaves and you got the leaves. These are fake acorns. Don't use real acorns. They have those little critters in them. Um, these are tree logs from Discount School Supply. These are just rocks from the dollar store. These are those fun sticks I found from Hobby Lobby. Um, and then these are just a whole bunch of, I actually, these are just like forest animals. They're not all like nocturnal animals. They're just more forest animals. And then I put some black felt out. Um, and there's also green, brown, and um, blue. And those are just textured foam, which I found forever ago. I, have not, I haven't been able to find them again. But that way they can build like rivers. They can pretend the the blue is like a river or the mud or maybe maybe they're gonna fold this over the block to make a cave or the can whatever they want um so i really love using felt and foam in the block center because typically my blocks the bottom shelf sorry my the bottom shelf of my block stays the same um but the top changes out based on our theme so yeah so that's the nocturnal animals block center and again if you own my stem my fall stem I can build pack go download it again because there's four or five five new cards I added for this theme and then this is just my other side oh a little lonely moose over here this side um doesn't really change so this I do have another side of my block center I just wanted to show you but this side pretty much stays the same all year and I think that is everything all the things going on in my classroom right now. So much fun. So yeah, so I know um, some of you are saying you can't do Halloween themes. So this is kind of the perfect little tricky fun theme you can do. So you can do, still do like spiders and bats, um, some of the Halloween-ish animals. But that way, if you can't do Halloween, like when I worked for the school district, we couldn't do Halloween. So I feel you guys, um, totally, totally feel you guys. Um, cause it's kind of a bummer when you can't do it, but then I totally understand why, cause it's the school district, right? You got to follow the rules. 
um, and what they want. But yeah, you can, nocturnal animals is like the perfect theme if you can't do Halloween. And I, well, I hope you guys have a great night. I think I answered all your questions. If not, um, pop in the pocket of preschool Facebook group and ask again. Again, make sure you're signed up for my newsletter. Bye.